Today we want to talk a little bit about leadership and self-confidence and taking initiative and responsibility. The quote that I'm going to use as the basis of this video comes from Marine Corps Manual Number 1 on tactics. And I first heard about it through the Jocko podcast 190. That's with Jocko Willink and David Burke. But first, this channel talks about mental toughness, responsibility, resilience. We do fitness videos, some self-defense videos, as well as other skills for your personal protection and your personal security. So if you would, please subscribe by clicking on the lower right-hand corner of your screen on that top secret icon. And if you don't see that icon, please go down to the comment section below the video and click subscribe so that you don't miss out on the latest videos. So now the quote from the Marine Field Manual 1 on tactics. A leader's self-confidence is the wellspring from which flows the willingness to assume responsibility and exercise initiative. One more time. A leader's self-confidence is the wellspring from which flows the willingness to assume responsibility and exercise initiative. Now there's many things there. We have self-confidence. We have a leader's self-confidence. We have a willingness to assume responsibility and a willingness to exercise initiative. So in order to be a good leader, you have to have self-confidence. If you're not confident in yourself, then you're not going to have the confidence to lead others. You are going to instill in them apprehension and fear as opposed to a confidence that you know what you're doing and they can trust you. Obviously, if you want to be a leader, you have to build self-confidence. Even if you aren't in a leadership position, Leadership is something that everyone should exude and pursue in their lives simply because we are all leaders in some form or fashion and at some point in our life. So pursue self-confidence, build your self-confidence. Uh, do so by challenging yourself and we've covered several other facets of that of how to build self-confidence and mental toughness, resilience, um, you can check them out after the video. So a leader's self-confidence is a wellspring from which flows the willingness to assume responsibility and exercise initiative. When we have self-confidence as leaders and it, when we have self-confidence as people, we assume responsibility for something. We take charge of something. If there is a challenge or task that lies ahead, we step up and assume the responsibility or role of taking on that challenge, uh, whether it be eliminating a threat or getting something done that needs to be done at work, at school, in the home. And to exercise initiative, exercise initiative to go out and actually do it, to be motivated to do it, to have self-motivation, as it were. There's another aspect to this, though. A leader who has self-confidence can have that self-confidence eroded by those subordinate to him or her. So it's important not to tear down your leader, but to build him or her up in order that they have the self-confidence to lead properly and that you can have the confidence in their leadership. When we undermine and we cut down the self-confidence of others, what we're doing is we're making them ineffective as a leader. And so what would be the result of that? They will be unwilling to assume responsibility 
They will be unwilling to take initiative. They will be unwilling, if they do act, to act carefully and diligently and wisely. In addition to that, they will be unwilling to assume the responsibility if their decision or their action was incorrect or a mistake. They will be less likely, since they lack the confidence, they've had that undermined, they will be less likely to assume responsibility for their actions. They will be more likely to blame shift and try to blame others for their problems and not take ownership or responsibility for the actions that they took. And that's because their self-confidence is undermined. So when a person's self-confidence is constantly undermined, through derogatory language, even abusive speech and language, the person whose confidence has been undermined does not want to accept responsibility or take ownership for failures. They try to blame shift. There's no excuse to blame shift. And admittedly, true confession time, I've done that from time to time. And indeed, if confidence is eroded and undermined, so that there's an unwillingness to take responsibility for one's actions, that person isn't going to want to take the initiative and do things to get things done either. Now, we don't want to assume responsibility because the person who eroded that self-confidence, who has been undermining that self-confidence, has been dealing a death by a thousand cuts. There's a fear to take responsibility because if we were to take responsibility or ownership, the person that had undermined the self-confidence before perhaps would use it as a weapon against that person. So we don't want to admit that we did something wrong. We don't want to take responsibility for our actions because our self-confidence is eroded, but also because the person who has eroded our self-confidence and tried to drag us down has given us a history and a track record that that admission, when we do take ownership and responsibility for our actions, that admission will be used as a weapon against us and will be used to further restrict or punish us. This is typical in an abusive relationship. So you have, you have two things here. You have you have leadership, and then you also have relationship. So a person's self-confidence is the wellspring from which flows the willingness to assume responsibility and to take initiative. And also a leader needs that self-confidence as well. So the key, obviously, in life is to build up your self-confidence. Build up your self-confidence, build up your strength, your emotional strength and toughness. Check your ego, have humility. And that is the best way to have the self-confidence to assume responsibility and exercise initiative. It's interesting because this same podcast um, also has another quote, and I'll try to remember it. I don't have it written down, but it's basically... Since making mistakes is key to the learning process, leaders should work to reinforce lessons learned instead of offering derogatory criticism or something like that. And what a brilliant statement that is. Indeed, mistakes are part of the learning process and mistakes are part of life and usually you learn more from a mistake than you learn from just doing it right all the time. And I know that this is a tangent, but many people are afraid of making mistakes, so they don't act at all. They have all this knowledge, they think they know it all, but they don't do anything with it because one, they're <laughs> ironically undermining the self-confidence of those that do trying to erode their self-confidence and drag them down, but also they do not act themselves because they're afraid of making mistakes. And so they do, they do not 
do anything to make themselves better or take risks to the point of gaining success. But that's a tangent. So remember this quote, a leader's self-confidence is the wellspring from which flows the willingness to assume responsibility and take initiative. Obviously, in order to be a good leader or to be a good person, you need self-confidence. And that self-confidence has to be built up. So let's work on building up our self-confidence. We'll be better equipped to assume responsibility and exercise initiative. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think.